are now in a high top van with my partner Mel from Big Van Small World oh, yeah. and I thought it would be great to ask him his opinion of living full time in a high top camper van. Well Rebecca, speaking from experience, as you know, I live full time in this Mercedes Sprinter and it is a high top Sprinter, which means I can actually stand up in here and stretch out when I need to. Whereas in my previous van was a medium roof full transit, I couldn't stand up in that and it was a real ball leg, I've got to say. And you did live in it full time, didn't you? Yeah, well that's when I first started that transition from living in a rented house into living full time a van life and I soon learned very quickly that not being able to stand up was a real big issue so that's why I made the transition from a medium rooftop to a high rooftop i.e. this Mercedes Sprinter but even though this Mercedes Sprinter is only a medium wheelbase because it is a high top it does give me that luxury of being able to stand up now of course there is the downside of having a high top van and that is parking you will find that you can't get one of these vans in some restricted parking areas, especially when you come to the coast. So your van being a low roof, you haven't got that issue. You can yeah. sneak under those height barriers, but with this, you simply can't. And of course, because of the high top, it allows me to have a higher bed, which is just out of shot. There you go. So you can see my bed is quite high, which gives me loads of garage space. So I can fit loads of stuff underneath here including my foldable e-bike whereas if you have a low roof van obviously your bed's going to be lower and yeah i very much doubt if you'll get a bike under the bed unless you lay it on its side of course or you use a bike rack and put it outside the van having a high top allows you the security of having your bike under your bed rather than on a bike rack outside and other activities for that matter other sports so if you had like a surfboard i do i do um, a lot of water sports not surfing anymore used to back in the day but not anymore i'm more underwater than above the water i do scuba diving and also go treasure hunting with my scuba diving equipment on my back and that stuff's quite heavy it's quite bulky it does take up a lot of room but because my bed is so big and so high i can get all that good stuff underneath there and it's nice and safe and secure I don't have anything on the outside of my van except solar panels on the roof of course but then because I've got solar panels on my roof and it is so high up that's why I don't have a top box whereas in a low roof van a lot of people can put top boxes on their low roof vans and that gives them extra storage I guess at the end of the day it's what your personal preference is and what you're going to be using your van for if you're only using a van at the weekends and it's a weekend getaway you're probably better off with a low roof van because like I mentioned earlier, it affords you more freedom to park places. And there's an old adage that I often use, and that is freedom versus comfort. If you have a set of scales, you have comfort on this side and freedom on this side, the more freedom you have, the less comfort you seem to have. But the more comfortable you are, the less freedom you have. So it's getting that fine balance between comfort and freedom. Yeah, and what works for you. Yeah, and what works for you and what you want out of your life. It depends if you want to live in your van full time or if you just want to be a weekend warrior. But I would say for anybody out there, if you're thinking of doing full time van life, get a high top van. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the positives of living in a van now. The positives? Oh, I list as long as my arms. Well, my arms aren't long enough for that list. I'll tell you the number one positive of living in a van and there's a saying I've recently come up with and that is stick it to the man, live in a van because when you're living in a van, the man don't control you anymore you're in control of your own life and your own destiny because you haven't got all those restraints of a house you don't have to work 12 hours a day just to give a third of your wages away to a greedy landlord the life is more your own and if you do work 12 hours a day and you are earning good money that money is yours to keep and you can invest that money in you in yourself or in your van for instance which is exactly what i've been doing over the last four years all the money that i've been earning i've been reinvesting in this van and i've just started another project and yeah i live my life how i want it to my own rules if i want to lay in bed till midday which i don't you've <laughs> but never I, done that <laughs> but if i did i could i don't have to stress about having to go to work in fact I, I often say to people, I consider myself as being retired because I haven't got the restraints or the responsibilities of paying rent. 
I don't pay electricity, I don't pay for water. And I know you're probably thinking, oh, I'm a, I'm a scrounger on social security and all that, but I don't. I do actually have a full-time job and that's here on YouTube. And we pay into society in other ways. Yes, I do. I know that's probably a big argument. I open up a massive can of worms because a lot of people say, oh, you don't pay council tax. You don't deserve to use the street lights or the emergency services. We all contribute in other ways. And up until that point, you had paid into the system. Yeah. So I don't see there's anything wrong no, with that. No, I don't see no issue with that. And I pay for my road tax. I pay tax on fuel. Um, We're travelling all the time, paying into local areas. You contribute to local the local economy as it were so yeah live in a van stick it to the man yeah when i first started living in a van i was up to my neck in debt with no way out um i couldn't see i couldn't see a way out of getting out of that debt especially when covid struck because when covid come around and not me being a truck driver i wasn't allowed to work for a couple of weeks and it's during that transitional period of not being able to work and concentrating on my YouTube channel, and that's what actually launched my career here on YouTube. Although COVID was a terrible thing, and the pandemic was awful, um, it actually it enabled you enabled me to concentrate on more on my YouTube channel. And by the time the pandemic was over, my YouTube channel was bringing me in enough income to actually live on this platform. And I'm ever so grateful to every one of you out there that watch YouTube, because without you guys. My life would be really different right now. I'd still be probably living in a flat and up to my neck in debt. And single. And single, yeah. <laughs> van life, living in a van is the best thing, best decision I ever made in my life, honestly. And I've made some really shit bad decisions before, but living in a van, absolutely 100% no regrets. The best thing I ever did. And the best advice for someone considering low roof or high roof? How would you divide it between, if you had to say just two things to them, one against low roof or high roof, if they were on the fence about it, I would, what say, would you say it really does depend on what you want a van for. If you want a van as a weekend getaway, get a low roof because then you haven't got the issues of parking. If you're thinking about living in a van full time, 100% get a high roof. Yeah, because it will see you long term being in a space. It will guarantee that you can have enough space when there's bad weather so you can be inside and still have enough room, can't you? Yeah. And also, if you're um, in a couple or in a family, you'll need that extra room. You cannot be in a low roof if you're with a partner for longer than a weekend or a couple of weeks long term. Yeah, you just need to be able to walk around in the yeah. van. And have your own separate spaces as well. It's, it's little things like getting dressed in the morning yeah. or even brushing your teeth having a shave and over the sink in a low roof it's quite uh, yeah you have yeah. to do most of it on your knees probably you just gotta think about those things yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the little things that make the big difference yeah and think about your daily routine the items and the, the the routines that you do multiple times a day if you can do those in a space then they are the ones that will make or break your van life because if they're irritating over time that will build up and you'll hate your area you'll hate your space that you're living in whereas if you can make those multiple things that you do in a day easy then you'll enjoy the whole experience yeah but i will say um your mindset as well i, I always say, say people say to me how can you live in a van and i always say well i don't live in my van i live out of my van yeah yeah the van is just somewhere i come to sleep eat and yeah do that good and stuff look after yourself yeah yeah but most of the time i'm not actually in the van i'm out of the van and you'll find that if you do live in a van you spend more time out of it than in it because if you did it the other way around i think you'd go a bit crazy Definitely. yeah unless you're an introvert like i used to be and it suited me fine if i don't like my neighbors i'll just start my engine and drive off go yeah. somewhere else yeah that's the other good thing about having a van if, if you're surrounded by people you don't particularly like you can just drive off and go somewhere else yeah absolutely or yeah. if you want to you know get out of your comfort zone you can also do that whereas when you're in a house you get stuck in that your own routine your same lifestyle whereas in a van you can up sticks and go anywhere and change what you're currently doing so that you challenge yourself a bit more don't you? yeah I, I would say to anyone considering living in a van full time to just get a van build it out 
don't give up your accommodation straight away, but do try going off for the odd weekend or even a week now and again, just to dip your toe in the water and see how you feel and yeah. challenge yourself to park somewhere, park somewhere a bit odd other than a campsite, park, yeah. not in a lay-by, lay-by is the worst place to park, don't like lay it's too noisy. Um, just challenge yourself to park in a residential street somewhere yeah and start to learn what works for yeah, you yeah and just get used to the idea that people aren't watching you people aren't going oh why is that van now why is there a van parked outside so and so's house because they're not they don't think that because they most people are so busy going about their daily lives rushing to work rushing back from work rushing to the shops dropping their kids off at school they don't care about a van parked at the end of the road unless it's been there for weeks on end of course then that's another story but if you are going to park in a residential street or in a in a, in a industrial estate or something like that then just stay there one night and go and then park somewhere else the following night try and get used to that idea of being on the move yeah being on the move before you actually go into it full time because yeah. then by the time you go into it full time, you're completely accustomed to it and you're used to it and it's not a big deal. Yeah, and you've worked out what spaces and places you like to park up and, and be at yeah. rather than it all being completely new. And we've parked in some bizarre places, haven't we? Yeah, we've parked in doctor surgeries, car parks, leisure centres, down like dark lanes. Um, where else have we parked? People's Industrial driveways. estates, people's driveways. Yeah, you but name it. We won't there's been many a time also where we've parked up and maybe spent an hour or two there and then we didn't like it. So that's also perfectly <laughs> fine to do that. Pack your stuff back up and find another spot. There's no reason why just because you've parked up, if you don't feel safe or something's not quite right, you have to stay there. Your safety and your comfort is the most important. Yeah, yeah. One, one tip I will give anyone out there thinking of stealth camping, as they say, go to bed wearing pyjamas because then you can jump out of bed get in the front of your car or in front of your van and drive off if never you need to. never sleep in your birthday suit because you never know when you get the knock and you have to jump out of bed yeah and go somewhere and also you should really be aware all the time so don't you know get cozy and start having a little bit of a drink or leave your van in a mess when you go to bed so that it is able yeah. to be that you can jump out of bed quickly and drive off safely you grab your keys you know exactly where they are and everything is clear i'm saying that in four years i've never had to do that no, we only had to do it once, not in an emergency, but just when we wanted to move because of loud music. Oh, but that's yeah. it. We had all some idiot playing music, singing karaoke, four o'clock in the morning. And one time we parked down this really quiet road. I kid you not, it was like nice and dark, no traffic. The moment we went to bed, all these cars started going... Yeah, vroom, it, vroom. Like, it, it was came like, alive. It was like suddenly like a one-way racetrack. I don't know. Yeah. It was just... So we so quickly we moved. Move. Yeah, we had to move then. Yeah. But yeah, I think twice we've moved. Yeah. yeah. In all that time. And that's been pretty good. So yeah. yeah. Don't be scared of it. Dip your scared. toe. Yeah. Dip your toe in the water. Dip your toe in a little bit of van life. And uh, you'll, leave, you'll find out whether it's for you or not. Yeah. And it's not always picturesque all the time. Like, be prepared to park in leisure centre car parks down different roads. As long as you feel safe and it's well lit then it's good to go. And then the following morning, you might find this most amazing space or place to go and visit. But don't yeah. always think in your head that it's got to be the ideal parking spot for the ideal daytime. You could be sleeping somewhere else and driving for your day out or your, your week holiday and just be dotting around. So just be prepared that you're gonna be moving and finding a multitude of places to be rather than just thinking, one destination, one track, park up, stay there. It doesn't work like that. We've done that. We have done that, <laughs> but it's very that. rare. We went down this little place once because you needed to use the toilet, didn't you? Yeah, we found we this found beautiful this little, place. Little, little, you found a toilet on Google Maps 
Oh, I need to go to the toilet. Oh, I don't feel well, got an upset stomach. So oh, we'll go down there. We went down this little place anyway. We ended up staying there for two, three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah, <laughs> we, we didn't move. For three weeks. It was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, and there it's was like little a, a little community of van dwellers there as well. We just stumbled upon this place purely by chance. Yeah. Made loads of friends. And we, we've got some friends now we still keep in touch with because of yeah. that. Yeah. So, yeah, get out there. Get out on the road. Enjoy yourself and meet like minded people. Yeah. Yeah, with my son, honestly, my, I've got so many friends right now that I would never have had if I decided to live in a van. Yeah, it really does push you out yeah. of your comfort zone. We've not met one nasty person, have we? <laughs> have we? I oh, never no, was it. Yeah. Here we have. But oh yeah. yeah, that's different. Um, yeah, we had we came across one couple that were a bit odd, but again, <laughs> you can just move. Either arguing or fucking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> edit that bit. Out. <laughs> Yeah, but on the whole, just use your common sense, you know, and just have fun. Get out there. So we hope that that has answered a few of your questions. Let us know in the comments section down below what your tips are and what you love best about van life. Or what is it that is drawing you to this kind of lifestyle? We'd love to know. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Remember, live in a van, stick it to the man. <laughs> So if you want financial freedom and freedom to pursue your life in a different way, then follow along for more videos like this. And don't forget to subscribe to Mel's channel, Big Van Small World. And if you like things more of the spiritual side, then I also have another channel called Sacred Spirit, which I will link down below. Until next time, guys, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Ta-da for now.